Hello, everyone out there. I'm Ryan Lathan with Fort Worth Opera, and I am beyond thrilled to be here with the divine Suzanne Phillips, <laughs> internationally renowned soprano and one of the stars of the Met's lavish production of Puccini's La Boheme, part of our Moonlight Film Fest with the Metropolitan Opera at Coyote Drive-In. Hi, Susanna. How are you Hi. on this wintry day? Oh, I'm okay. I'm I'm in uh, I'm on Long Island right now with my family, and we got a big storm last night, so we're kind of trudging around in the snow, but we're good. So I probably shouldn't tell you that it's like 65 degrees here. I don't want to hear that at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Happy to. Sure. Well, let me first say congratulations on this amazing, illustrious career that you've carved out for yourself since you left Alabama and went to Juilliard and then graduated from the Ryan Opera Center in Chicago. So, brava diva. Thank, uh, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It's been a ride. Hey, I can only imagine. Um, in your career as an opera singer, there has definitely been a bit of luck entwined in all the hard work, like it is for everyone. Mm -hmm. But what advice do you have for aspiring young singers who are having to navigate this very, very strange post-pandemic world and finding their footing in such a competitive industry? Uh, well, you know, this is, you know, it's been overstated so much, but I'll say it again. It's, these are unprecedented times. There's, you know, really, no way to um, predict how things will go and what things will return after we've had this pause um, and how they will return and what things won't. But what is so fascinating to watch and see is the tremendous innovation that's happening. People are being fearless, making art and trying, trying things, trying projects, trying collaborations that you know, perhaps they hadn't done before. And I, I'm so excited to see how the things that we have been almost forced to really embrace in this time will help us, you know, as we move forward as an art form. And, you know, as a young singer, the things um, that you can say right now are kind of the same things, which I would say before, which are be tremendously prepared, be more prepared than anybody else in the room. Um, sing only the things that you like, <laughs> sing only the things that you, that speak to you, that really make you a musician. Because, you know, I always told myself that there were so many other, say, other sopranos right outside the door who could sing every aria that I sang better than me. And what, you know, I felt like I did was I found pieces and I found roles and art songs and whatever it was that really made me feel like I was saying something from my inner self. And I think that really matters. Um, and that makes you stand out amongst the crowd. You've sung the role of Musetta at the Metropolitan Opera every year for a decade, which is amazing. And you even met your, you, you made your Met debut with her. While you've now retired the role, could you share with us uh, a few of your favorite moments that you've had on stage performing this character over the years? I mean, it's, it, it is such a, an honor and privilege to be able to repeat a role like that because the way you perform it, the way you sing it, the way you approach it the first year is totally different from how you would approach it a decade later. You know, that's a decade plus children, plus mm -hmm. lifestyle and age and, you know, experience and all of it. So it's it's kind of a, a fascinating study for me. <laughs> I've always loved that opera. I've loved her as a character. She's um, one of the things that I think is the most wonderful about that opera in particular is that every character is fully fledged. You mm -hmm. get to the end and you really feel like you know them all you know who they are, you know their circumstances. There's an arc for everyone in yes. the show. And I think that's what makes it such a, a, for lack of a better word, a perfect opera because it it um, takes you into their world fully. And for a character like Musetta, she has this tremendous joy and zest for life that I have, which I love. And I love finding, being able just to, you know, go out on stage and laugh and find joy in every moment that I can. But at the same time, she finds this empathy and she finds sympathy and real heart. Um, and I, I just, every time it, it moves me. 
On a personal note, I've, I've seen you as Donna Anna in Fort Worth Opera's Don Giovanni. I think that was like in 2010. That was one of my favorite gigs of all time. Was that? <laughs> was it? I was Why? just talking to a friend. I was talking to David Portillo, who was, um, uh, yeah, yeah, who was in that with me. And I was talking to Holly Harrison, who was in that with me and, and Michael Todd Simpson. That was such a wonderful group of people. And, you know, there are times in your life where projects that you work on are really impactful. And that for me was, was one of them. I also saw you, I guess it was, it was at New York at the Met as uh, Clemence in L'Amour de Loin. Mm -hmm. And you were, you were amazing. And I love that outfit that you had that was like chain right. metal. It was, it was very practical, very practical. Yeah. I loved, loved singing, uh, singing that opera. That, that's an interesting one because I found it to be um, much like Mozart in the way that it is, it just gets better and deeper the more you're with it. The more you sit with it, the more you let it enter, it just... Oh God, it's so, so moving. I loved, I loved working on that. Can you tell us what, um, what has been one of the roles over the year that has really, really, really resonated with you and that you look forward to returning to time and time again and why? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I think that uh, one role that has really resonated with me is Donna Anna. I love singing that part. I, I think she's, um, I think she's fascinating. I think her music is beautiful. I think it's such a wonderful opera to be a part of. At the same time, I prefer acting Don Elvira. <laughs> so that's awfully, that's awfully enticing. Um, any Mozart really, I, I would sing tomorrow. I absolutely love it. And when I'm going to practice, like I'm, I'm doing every day now, I, I often will just pull out uh, Mozart aria. Today it was Per Pietà from um, Così Fan Tutte. And I just, there's something, it's a balm for the voice. So I'm feeling, and I, I love it. What character would you like to play that you haven't yet? Um, I would love to play the Marshallin. Mm. I would love to do that. That's one, that's one that is hopefully hopefully one day that I'll, I'll kind of grow into. I'm, 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 I've learned it and I'm, I'm feeling it out. And it's one of those ones you don't want to approach too soon. And I'm, uh, but I love it. That trio at the end is so magnificent. Uh, yeah. Sublime, really is. Um, when, well, hmm. when, when COVID-19 is under control, whatever that means, I don't know what that means, but, and the world, the opera world kind of returns to normal <laughs> and global theaters start opening up again. What do you think um, the industry, what do you hope the industry as a whole will have truly paid attention to during this past year? And I guess leading up to 2020 as well, and then made an effort to improve, fine tune and, and change for the betterment of the art form and for artists themselves. I think this time has really given us all a chance to um, obviously take a minute and really think about what is impactful in about what we do, um, why we do what we do, and how what we can do can impact our world in a positive way. Um, there are so many ways to do that. And I know at Fort Worth, y'all are y'all have some great ideas coming down the pike of, of exactly that, of, of finding projects that are really impactful. And I, I think that um, what I hope people take away from this is, you know, getting rid of a lot of the extraneous stuff and really focusing on what is important and what what is great art, what, you know, why a musician needs to make music and um, how that will, how to present it to an audience in the most effective way. And I think that, you know, there, I'm not sure um, how it will come back. I, because I, in my mind, there are so many things that have happened with video and so many things that have happened with, um, with collaborations between genres that I feel like, you know, right now the possibilities are endless because our medium has completely opened up. And so I'm really excited to see what people do. And for myself, I, um, I, it has been a really hard year. It's been really hard to have something that it makes up a lot of you. I wouldn't say it's who I am, but I, I would say it makes up a lot of, of who I am. 
And um, to not only lose that, but to have that whole world and ability to do it evaporate has right. been um, life shaking. And so for me, it really has been um, coming back to why I'm, why, why do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? Do I want to leave my children <laughs> to do this? Do I want to, um, and, uh, and it has been such a balm to be able to go back to the very basics and rediscover a very um, simple, clear passion for the beauty that is making real art. And I've had the great fortune of working with a couple of musicians in this time in a little bubble. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and each time we get together, it's just a, this tremendous um, gratitude. And so I'm, I'm so looking forward to the first experience of getting in a room with people and uh, creating. Susanna, it was an absolute delight. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. I Thank really you, and I hope you all enjoy the show. We're going to love it. It's one of my favorites, actually. So all you Texas lovers out there, do not miss your chance to witness the phenomenal Susanna Phillips as Musetta in Puccini's romantic masterpiece, La Boheme, this Thursday, February 11th at 7 p.m. at the Coyote Drive-In. Visit fwopera.org to secure your Moonlight Film Fest tickets today. Have a wonderful week, Susanna. Thanks, you too. Bye.